This video explores the Hello World application that's generated for you by Eclipse. The objectives are stated here with a timeline for when they appear in the video. Okay, this video assumes that you have Eclipse and the SDK plugin for Eclipse all configured and working fine on your system. And then it also assumes, I'd like you to go out if you have not, to the Android developers website, click on the videos tab. And on about the platform, there are three videos listed that are excellent, and there's no reason to try to redo that very good work here. Androidology Part 1, 2, and 3, talking about an overview of the architecture, the application lifecycle, and some of the more important APIs that are part of the platform. So uh, go off and watch all three of those, and then come back and uh, watch this video where all we're going to do is tear apart the whole world application we get for free to get a, uh, a, an overview and understanding of the uh, components of an Android application. But you'll have a much better foundation to digest that if you've gone out first and watched these three videos. Okay, so I'm assuming you've done that. And I'm going to launch my version of Eclipse. Saying run and selecting my default workspace and that launches Eclipse for me. <clears throat> a lot of things launch up on my second monitor and I have to drag them in. I'm working on a three monitor system here. So now I've got a, a brand new version of Eclipse. It might have had a hello window there you might have had to close out to. You might want to take the time to explore some of the features and tutorials that they have to offer in Eclipse if you're brand new to Eclipse. I'll be giving you some tips and trips about Eclipse along the journey as we have a need to know. So now I'm just going to come in here and say I want to file new Android project. Now if you've never selected an Android project before it may not be there in the tab like it shows up on mine right now. And you may need to go project and expand Android, Android project. Right there and the one we saw the moment ago are the same but once you select that the first time then it throws it up in that higher top level menu right here so I'll just select it from there you might have to select it from a, a tad lower in the navigation until you've done that one time so Android project and then we're going to give the project a name and I'm just going to stay with the hello world project for now click create the, the uh, new project in the workspace we're creating a brand new project click next and then I'm going to build almost everything I do through all my demos in 2.3.3. Especially for starting out for a, a basic class, if you don't have any real knowledge of Android yet, there's nothing that we need to show in 4 until we get advanced down the road that we can't demonstrate in 2.3.3. And some of the functionality they implemented in Android 3 and 4 has actually been backported to Android 2.3.3 in what's called a compatibility package that we can uh, use. And then that keeps us to a much larger market exposure if we build to 2.3.3 or below until even my new Droid Bionic that I just got a couple months ago is still only 2.3.3. We alienate too much of our market uh, unless we're building just for tablets or something to go up to Android 4 yet. So most of what I'm going to be doing, we're going to select 2.3.3. And when we select, select Build Target, when we use the... Um, API manager by clicking on this little Android dude right here right now we could download more uh, SDKs to target against and so all of the SDKs we downloaded by using that SDK manager in a previous video are the SDKs we're seeing here right now and I've limited that to just four the Google version and the vanilla version of API 10 and the Google version and the vanilla version of API 15 we'll talk more about the differences between those again along the journey. All right, so we're going to go ahead and select uh, API 10 2.3.3. And then application name is Hello World package name. You're required to have a domain name to publish to the Android marketplace, or I should call it Google Play now. And I'm going to go with Professor Android. And then you have to, don't stop there. If you stopped there, that would be a problem. Because you put one app application up on the marketplace, great. Now you put a second application up on the marketplace, oh no, they have the same package name. And then if two people try to download applications you wrote with the same package name, it's not going to let them install the second one 
because it's in the same package. And so you need to give a unique name to every unique, unique package name to every application you put out on for the Android Marketplace. I'm going to call it that by mistake a lot. But if I say Android Marketplace, I mean Google Play, uh, one and the same. They recently changed their name. Okay, um, so then I'm just usually going to take the name of my application, dot, and lowercase it for the name of my package name so that I make sure every application I have is got a, a unique package to be placed in. So there is my package reference. Then this says, let's create an activity. Let's have one activity so we have one window essentially in our application to start with. I like that to be my main activity, the port of entry in the program. I like to call it main. By default, it just takes your application name and throws the word activity over it and says, I'm gonna create you one for free called the Hello World activity. I like my main portal of entry in my program to be called main, so I typically overwrite that as main activity. And then we create that. Here it's saying, what's our minimum SDK target? We go back and see we wanted to target API 10. I want suggesting that we are minimum SDK is API uh, 10. You can uh, potentially set that target lower than the one you're building against. So you can say, well, I'm targeting API 10, but it'll actually run on API 9 or API 8. I'm going to leave that alone right now, and we'll talk more about that particular item along the journey as we have a need. So we have now created a Hello World application, and this thing is runnable. Now, I've come in while we were offline and created myself a few more emulators. I'll talk about this a little bit more as we go. But if we click on the little phone right here, that's our Android Virtual Device Manager. Think of it as an emulator creator, the way that I create phony cell phones that I can send up my code to and test it in this virtualized environment. And so we're going to come in here and say, I've created a basic 2.3.3 phone. I've created a Google 2.3.3 phone, the Google API. I've created a Google ice cream phone. I called it a phone that's running ice cream sandwich and I've created an ice cream tablet uh, as well. And so I'm going to stick with for my earlier demos to just say I'm going to build against 2.3.3 and I'm going to come in here and start an emulator. So we click start. When I start that, because I'm running only 1024 by 768 on this monitor to have a, vis a good uh, visual for the capture for these videos, I, can't, I want to start this thing up and I change my size down to like 7 inches here. You can probably skip that. If I don't do that, my phone's like bigger than the size of my screen, and I found that 7 inches works well when I have my monitor set to 1024 by 768. 